Lemon video blog. I'm Terry Parsons, joined today by my guest Raul Benazia, man. Terry, great to see you again, us. buddy. Uh, we're talking about this, Hollywood Boulevard, the latest album from Raul and the Big Time. Tell us a bit about how this project came together. I started recording Hollywood Boulevard uh, not that long after I um, finished and released You My People in 2009. Mm -hmm. So it's been about a five-year trip of putting this thing together. Wow. It took a long time, because I I basically, the concept with this album, how it developed, was that basically I wanted to perform with uh, friends and mentors who had influenced me, uh, many of whom I'd met in my travels and years uh, going to California. Mm -hmm. So um, what would happen was, uh, say, Curtis Salgado was in town doing a blues festival, um, he'd come from the stage to the recording studio and we'd record that night. <laughs> or. Uh, Mavis Staples was playing just outside of Toronto. I picked up the whole, all the boys in the band, and we came to the studio and recorded. So doing it that way, it uh, took a while to kind of put it together. And uh, then I ended up doing a session in Los Angeles as well to kind of finish the record. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's when I got to play with, the, with sort of the other bunch on the record, besides my own guys. <laughs> Thank you. 
through kind of this love-hate relationship where, you know, I like it one day, I listen to it the next day, and I hate it, and then I like it, and I hate it. And I go, that goes on just for months and months and months. And, you know, kind of like if I'm doing a play or something, you, you don't really know how, how it is. You're so close to it. You don't really know what effect it's going to have on people till you release it. Yeah. So uh, you kind of anxiously wait after you get it out to see what the feedback is and how people <laughs> respond because that's really the litmus test. I mean, you have to be happy with it, but people are lying if they say, oh, I don't care if anyone likes it or not. And that's the whole reason yeah. we do this, right? Yeah. So, you know, to get, to get positive feedback from people, you know, t today is Larry Taylor's birthday. Larry Taylor turned 72 today, and uh, I was just thinking of this, that, uh, you know, Larry appears on the record, uh, you know, such a legendary performer. He's at Woodstock and mm -hmm. can't eat. And, and I know, like, when I got the Facebook back from Larry saying, hey, thanks for sending me the record. Good job. I really like the record. You know, that's when you sort of go, like, okay, man, you know, like... Uh, it's worth the it, effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then, you know, when it starts to get radio play all over the place and uh, getting good feedback online and, you know, God forbid, some record sales. <laughs> we didn't, can't get too hung up on that these days, but... Uh, but yeah, it's, it's been really a satisfying uh, experience so far, and I hope it ends up being a calling card too, a little bit, because it has so many guests from America on it, I'm hoping that it opens the doors for me a little bit more in the U.S. to, to play, I mean, I really just, if I play in the U.S., I play in Los Angeles, like, I'm yeah. just like, that's my, <laughs> that that, one little that, microcosm. Yeah. and so I'm hoping it gives some opportunities to uh, start playing in different corners of the States as well. Okay.
talked a bit about the fact that the gratification for the album is kind of slow coming. Uh, when you're on stage live, the gratification is instant. If people are really digging what you're doing, you can feel it immediately. But when you're putting an album out, it's kind of like throwing your children to the wind, isn't it? Yeah, well, I, uh, my kids are still very young, so I haven't, uh, they haven't left home yet, thank goodness. So, uh, <laughs> I it's coming. I, yeah, I can't relate to that exactly yet. Listen, you're nervous when you put it out because, you know, a recording a CD is your calling card. It's mm. and it represents you, so you got to be proud of what it is and mm -hmm. and what it says and and who's on it. And but this record, you know, because I have so many of these incredible guests on it as well as my own band, um, I, I'm proud of it. And I feel like it can it, it represents me in the whole world of the blues. I don't feel like oh well. It's okay for a Canadian release. It's okay for a release from Toronto or from Parkdale, my neighborhood. It's like no, this is, this is belongs on the big stage with everybody else, and and you know, you then gotta stand tall and and, and proud. So I'm hoping this is a record that gets me around a little bit more. I'd love to do that. When you're listening to the album, I've noticed that there's, there's a, a certain amount of diversity of sound. There are certain songs like Why Am I Treated So Bad has sort of a funky, groovy, mm -hmm. TV sheets feel to it. But then you follow it up with something like uh, Tired, which just sounds so dirty, <laughs> down in deep Chicago kind of sound. Was that something you wanted to do with this album, to create that, that diversity of sound? Well, you know, what I admired about a lot of the records that have come from the west coast of the U.S., California in particular, is uh, a lot of those guys I've really admired over the years, or who are mentors of mine, like, you know, Mark Hummel, uh, Junior Watson, the uh, the great Hollywood Blue Flames, uh, all those guys. They, they ha they're very steeped in the knowledge of a pretty broad swath of the blues genre. Mm -hmm. So they would often put out records and often put out records that do have a kind of variety on them. Yeah. And part of the things I've al that's always drawn me to that West Coast sound is that they found a way to try to combine, you know, big band, jump and swing uh, with California based R&B, you know, like Lowell Folsom and, and all those great T-Bone Walker. Yeah. And then they've also tied that into the classic chess sound. Yeah. So, their recordings would often have this kind of diversity on them. So that's just kind of what I've done with the big time stuff in general. I, I haven't really tried to make uh, anything, in the, like if there's anything that unifies our sound, for me it's more the experience of making it. It's all live off the floor, there's barely any overdubs, we almost uh, we barely even use headphones. It's all in the same room live with the experience of everybody playing it together. Yeah. And I do it on two inch tape, at least to capture it, you know. Mm. So that ends up being thematically the thing that binds it. And then I find, yeah, you can have a lot of variation inside that with music. If you're if you're changing sonically how you recorded every song, mm -hmm. you know, then it can really be hard to stitch it all together in the end. I mean I don't even you know, maybe five years from now nobody will be putting out CDs. It'll all be, you know, single tracks that people release. Yeah. But we're still in the era of trying to have a cohesive nest to the whole thing. You You've know? also got a very cool website which is ww.raulandthebigtime.com for your web surfing fans, what can they find? Well, you know, it's uh, got all the gig dates and it's got uh, links. Uh, one of the cool things that we've done online in the last uh, uh, month and a half is we've released a video for okay. uh, on YouTube for the uh, song High Roller. So if you go on uh, our website, you can see the uh, link to the new thing. But if you're on YouTube, just click in Raul in the big time High Roller and uh, you'll see the new video. Cool. So the album is Hollywood Boulevard. It's Raul and the Big Time. Raul, thank you so much for joining us. Thank man. you, Terry.
I'm